This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by Netflix. What's going on everyone? Welcome to another episode of Rumor Roundup. I'm your host John Regis, it's the show where I take all the tech rumors from the week and I condense them into one show so you know what could come, what might happen, what potentially has the possibility to come sometime this year, next year, or six years from now, and what definitely might probably happen. Up this week, it's all about the iPhone 6, the Galaxy S5, and the iWatch. Rumor Roundup, let's start rounding things up. Let's begin with the big daddy of all rumors. Korean securities firm DDB Daewoo Securities Research has shipped off a single PDF that alleges both the specs of not only the Galaxy S5, but also what Apple's got in store for the iPhone 6. The company made its estimates using industry research, so they should be kind of close or maybe not even close at all, but they were confident enough in the specs to include it in their letter to investors. So before I get to them, a lot of these are kind of like duh specs, of course. Uh, but it is still interesting on what Samsung and Apple could do. So let's start with Samsung. Galaxy S5, according to them, is going to be a 5.2 inch screen with a resolution of 2560 by 1540. It'll be an AMOLED display, and if you can do your quick math, that is a whopping 560 PPI. Power of this guy is a Snapdragon 805 or Samsung Exynos 6 processor. Samsung kind of does that. They do two separate processors with their devices, uh, depending on the model. 3 gigs of RAM, which like we saw in the Galaxy Note 3, available in 3264 or for the first time as far as I can remember, 128 gigabytes of storage. That is a lot of gigabytes. 16 megapixel camera, 3.2 megapixel on the front and the big boy obviously on the back. Running Android 4.4 KitKat release date. Here's a big one, Q1 or Q2 of this year. And by my math and my sundial, we're already in February. So only two months left in Q1. So Maybe very soon. Uh, omitted though from their specs and mentions of a fingerprint or retina scanner, which we've heard rumors of, and what the darn thing might be made of. We've even heard some rumors that it might ditch plastic and maybe go the way of metal, but I wouldn't hold your breath uh, for that. But we might know what's going to be coming very soon. Samsung has an unpacked event scheduled for February 24th, which of course Techno Buffalo will be at. So, what do you guys think? That seems like Captain Obvious specs for the next generation Galaxy S5. Uh, but the obvious sometimes tend to be what actually comes to fruition. So I would say those seem pretty, pretty solid. Uh, anything you guys are excited about and not excited about? Is it worth upgrading from your Galaxy S4? I want to hear your thoughts. Samsung wasn't the only juicy nugget of kernel leak goodness that they had. They're also shedding some light on what the very secretive Apple might have in store for the iPhone 6. They suggest that Apple were releasing the phone in two different models. I'm not talking 6 and 5C, 2 or 6C. They're saying one with a 4.7 inch screen, which you're saying, hey, that's big, it's 0.47 inches. But wait till I get to the other part of that rumor. The other size, a 5.5 inch screen with resolutions of 1080 by 1920 and 1280 by 2272 respectively. Apple will also supposedly be changing the material uh, of the screen to indium gallium zinc oxide, otherwise known as IGZO from the older low temperature polysilicon or LTPS they were suggesting. Strangely though, the PDF says that the iPhone 6 will run iOS 7.2 instead of iOS 8, and it could launch as early as Q2, well before Apple's typical release window. And that's kind of funny, or like it could release, could release as early as tomorrow. I would say for sure, we will see the iPhone 6 as early as tomorrow, but as late as the end of this year. So again, sort of fun to speculate. Uh, those are big phones, 5.7 and 4.7, certainly much bigger than Apple's done, certainly creates a little bit of fragmentation. Uh, curious to see what Apple does with legacy uh, apps and high resolution screens could certainly be nice. No mention though of any sort of inductive charging, NFC or camera or any kind of other stuff, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. Uh, it does look to be pretty nice. I'm kind of excited to see what Apple's got in store, what Samsung's got in store and let them just like hungry, hungry hippo battle each other out for all the little marbles where the marbles and that analogy. Regardless though, I'm excited. We take a break from all the awesome rumors to thank our friends at Netflix. 
If you don't use Netflix, you are seriously missing out on all the great TVs and movies that you probably didn't get a chance to go out and see. You can catch up on things like The Walking Dead, Breaking Bad, Netflix original programming. Definitely worth checking out if you've got any console, Xbox 360, an Xbox One, a PS3, a PS4, a Wii or a Wii U. You can already get Netflix or really any smartphone uh, app if you've got a Windows phone, iOS or Android. It works and you should be checking it out. Uh, if you're not already, give it a free 30-day trial. Go to netflix.com slash buffalo to try it, because you should. You're missing out on all the great shows. Again, that is netflix.com slash buffalo. Now back to the rumors. While we're sitting with Apple, let's go and talk about them. Uh, let's talk about the iWatch. At this point, it seems like a close to certainty that we'll see something wearable coming out from Apple, presumably this year. Beyond that, though, we don't really know much else. The New York Times was trying to illuminate what Apple might have in store. They claim that Apple is focusing on health and fitness uses for its rumored iWatch and that iOS 8 make a pact with a health book app that will help users track their health progress. So with fitness gadgets becoming their own category, it kind of makes sense that Apple would want a piece of that ever-growing, delicious, and presumably very profitable pie. Wearables, though, are often plagued by poor battery life. New York Times has also claimed that Apple is going to try to alleviate that by offering, finally, I might add, Wireless inductive charging to the iWatch, and also will release a charging plate to accompany it. So that sounds kind of realistic. But the time takes it one step further, saying that Apple is experimenting with solar charging as well. Something if it ever does come to fruition, I would not bet your house on seeing it anytime soon. The inductive charging rumor makes a lot of sense. If they're going to have inductive charging in an iWatch and a charging plate similar to the Qi charger, I would assume the iPhone 6 will also come with inductive charging. And maybe even NFC, though it's not related. I'm just, just thinking about things I hope that it might have wistfully. And you guys, what do you think? What are you excited about? Not excited about Galaxy S5, iPhone 6, iWatch, sort of like the heavyweights of the rumor world every year, sort of Samsung flagships, Apple's flagships, and let them battle it out. But I'm excited. I want to know what you guys think. Leave it in the comments, sort of down here, and like my belly button. Area. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Of course, check us out at technobuffalo.com for the latest and greatest tech news. Until next time, I am John Rettinger. I'll see you next video. What's up, everyone? Thank you for watching that video. If you want to see more of the latest and greatest tech news, you can subscribe to our main Techno Buffalo channel by clicking the button right down below in my pants region or click on the buttons to your right to see more videos.